Hi peeps, how are you doing folks? Always good to see you. Welcome to my channel. For all you Linux fans out there, there are a whole bunch of penguins running around behind me. This video is all about installing Docker desktop on Windows. You may wonder, all this Linux talk and penguins, what has that got to do with Docker Desktop and Windows? As of some time now, Docker Desktop is running on top of Windows subsystem for Linux version 2, also known as, or abbreviated as, WSLv2. This backend brings significant improvements. Basically, it is a full Linux kernel built by Microsoft. <laughs> yes, you heard it right. Microsoft builds Linux kernels these days. Where is the IT world going to? Of course, you can still use the Hyper-V and the virtual machines, but Docker says this is deprecated now, a thing of the past. Without getting too tacky and nerdy, I will just mention two significant improvements. Resource consumption, the required amount of CPU and memory resources is significantly optimized. After the workload is finished, it quickly releases them. The second noteworthy improvement, it only takes around 10 seconds now to start Docker application after a cold start compared to the previous versions, which was around one minute. I'm sure everyone's happy because of performance improvements. You know, I'm advertising Docker here for free. You think I should ask for something in return? Maybe a donut or maybe a toy penguin? The purpose is to give you a smooth video guide without too much hassle. We will go through four necessary steps. Prerequisite number one, enable hardware-based virtualization support of your AMD or Intel processor in the BIOS of your computer. Shall we switch to my computer screen now? I'm in the BIOS of my Lenovo laptop. If you're interested, I will put the link of the exact specification of my laptop below in the description box for you to check it out. In the configuration part, there's a setting AMD V technology and I have enabled it. If you're using an Intel computer, this might look quite different. So be sure to check on Google how to enable this. So one neat way to check if you successfully enabled hardware-based virtualization support is to press the hotkey Control, Shift and Escape key. So three keys all at once. And here you will go under performance. Uh, there's a part where it says virtualization enabled. Prerequisite number two, how to enable the two necessary Windows optional features. I will show you the graphical user interface way and the other through PowerShell. I will press the Vim key and R and enter app with programs and features control panel applet. And under turn Windows features on or off located right here and the two optional features, the virtual machine platform and the Windows subsystem for Linux. You just press OK here and you will see a progress bar. Let it finish and Windows will need to restart. Let me show you the command line interface way. I will click on the start button, right click and start the terminal as admin with just a few lines of code or PowerShell commandlets. The commandlet get Windows optional feature and let me just paste in the first one. Let it be virtual machine platform press enter, its state is disabled. We will check the other optional feature as well. And this one state is also disabled. So how to enable it? I will just pipe this command into another PowerShell commandlet, enable Windows optional feature and press enter. I will not restart just yet. I will do the same for the second feature. Just join the two commands through pipeline. I will definitely need to reboot my computer now. And I'm back. It did take a while for my computer to boot up again. We have a blue check mark next to both of the features. So this was successful. Prerequisite number three. I will go to Docker Docs page. This is the URL. And I will surely place this also in the description box below the video. You just scroll a little bit down and there's the Linux kernel update package. So please download it and run it. There is only one step left, prerequisite number four, which is an easy one and self-explanatory. We will go to the Docker's homepage and just download Docker Desktop for Windows. I will run the executable now.
Let's press OK. This part is a bit boring, so I will speed it up for you. Installation succeeded. In order for these changes to take effect, we have to log out. And I will do just that and see you later. So I logged out and logged back in. Docker didn't start automatically. I will run it now. It says right here, you must be in the Docker users group. Let us tweak that also. I will go to computer management and run it as administrator. Add my user here. In order for these changes to take effect, we have to log out again. I've logged back in. You know what? Frankly, it took a lot longer than 10 seconds to start Docker after a cold start. Since this is the first time actually we start Docker on this computer, I will cut it some slack. And this is it guys. Hope you found this video useful. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and also like the video to your success.